Hello. First, I'd like to start off by re reminding you about August 9th, 2014 in Ferguson, Missouri, where an unarmed 18-year-old named Michael Brown was fatally shot and killed by police officer Darren Wilson. What led from this horrific day were protests in which militarized police used militarized weapons to create order, when in reality, all it created was chaos. So my... My rebuttal will be based off of the irrelevant nature of my opponent's argument demonstrated through his counterplan, having no disadvantages to my advantages, his use of too much pathos, and his use of assumptions with pathos. My co opponent's counterplan is to roll back to Obama's 1033 program, but with less restrictions on first aid equipment whereas my counterplan is rolling back to Obama's 1033 program completely. So, the 1033 program permits the Secretary of Defense to transfer without charge excess U.S. Department of Defense personal property, including supplies and equipment, to state and local law enforcement agencies. It has allowed law enforcement agencies to acquire land, air, sea vehicles, weapons, computer equipment, fingerprint equipment, night vision equipment, radios and televisions, first aid equipment, tents and sleeping bags, photograph photographic equipment, and more. Obama's 1030 policy on the 1033 program will stop tanks and other tracked armored vehicles, weaponized aircrafts and vehicles, firearms and am ammunition, grenade launchers, and bayonets from being given to local police agencies. It will also attach some restrictions and conditions to the transfer of other equipment, including armored tactical vehicles like those used in Ferguson, Missouri, as well as many types of firearms, ammunition, and explosives. This these restrictions also include requiring the agencies to present a clear and persuasive explanation of the need for the controlled equipment, adopt community-oriented policing strategies, agree to close federal oversight and monitoring overseen by a new federal agency with the power to conduct local compliance reviews, train officers will, who will be using the gear, and keep data on how the equipment is used with used and with what results. So first, I'd like to first point out that my opponent's specific counter plan is irrelevant to the topic at hand, which is based on police misconduct. It is irrelevant to the topic due to his whole counter plan focus, focusing solely on making Obama's 1033 program have less restrictions on first aid equipment. My offense is better than my opponent's defense. My plan to roll back on Obama's 1033 program to demilitarize the police has better advantages. First, my plan continuously improves community relations with the pol police for a better so society in which we live in, as well as lowering crime rates at the same time. My opponent has no disadvantages to my argument, further demonstrating how my offense is better than my opponent's defense. Also, my plan focuses on police misconduct, whereas his counter plan focuses solely on first aid equipment, which is irrelevant to the topic. My opponent's counter plan is using the assumption that police officers have less first aid equipment when going back to Obama's 1033 program, yet they still have many ways of getting first aid equipment. According to the New York Times on December 1st, 2014, there are many federal programs to grant many to states for equipment and training related to anti-terrorism strategies. Not to mention the abundance of first aid equipment they already have and use. The State Homeland Security Program allows money to be allocated to states based on population, program pro proposals, and a formula that determines a minimum for each state. States then distribute the funds to local areas, the urban areas, to local areas. The Urban Area Security Initiative allows money to be granted to dozens of high-risk metro areas and shared with surrounding count counties and partners. 
There are multiple Justice Department grants that further provide things like first aid equipment, which further proves that my opponent's counterplan is irrelevant to not only the topic of police misconduct, but also to his argument on the issue of less first aid equipment being provided for the police officer's safety. The pathos my opponent uses based off of officer safety, specifically regarding the recent hurricanes, is for not since as shown above, there are multiple ways in which funding can be provided for the police in order to get first aid equipment. This pathos also has a low probability and uses assumptions for what-if scenarios only. My argument does not use assumptions based off of pathos, but on logos.